You're from what from what you've said, not insulting them. Um, you're from a very small town yes. with not a lot to offer. Yes. And it sounds to me like you I, did a whole lot. As much as I could with the resources that were given. Right. I mean, on why I'm, why I'm shouldn't paper. we expect that from I'm everyone paper. else? So in other words, are you saying that you don't think you deserve a spot at UT? Are you saying that you think you got in because you're black? <laughs> Time for the latest installment of Change My Mind, where we rationalize our positions on controversial topics. For this installment, we return to UT Austin to tackle the subject of affirmative action. This is uh, Fisher versus the University of Texas. A question of whether race can be used as an admissions criteria at uh, U.S. colleges and universities. If the nation has done something special against the Negro, as we were then called, for 240 years, the nation must do now something special mm -hmm. for the Negro. Mm -hmm. So merit is dependent upon who counts what is meritorious. This university owes us everything. I walk around this campus understanding that this was built on the backs of my people, and I owe none of you guys anything. We owe white people nothing. Now, we actually had so many great conversations that we'll be releasing several installments, lest this video be three hours long. So stay tuned for more, including one with a UT professor of hip hop. Now, of course, there are always those who aren't as excited to see us. Lights are at it again. I think you're a bigot. Oh! I think y'all are racist. <laughs> Steven Crowder. <laughs> y'all. I would probably punch him if I saw him. As always, if you want these videos to continue, please do consider joining Mug Club. It's $69 annually for students, veterans, active military. You get this wonderful hand-etched mug, the full daily show not available on YouTube, along with the entire Blaze TV's catalog at louderwithcrowder.com slash mug club. If not, at least bookmark this channel and check back for new videos every weekday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Before we get started with our conversation with Tina here, I want you to know that this is one of the most intensely personal change my mind conversations in recent memory. Before we get to that, let me know what you think about affirmative action. Is it racist by its very definition? Is it not? Should race be a determining factor in college admissions at all? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, but here we go on with a very revealing conversation with Tina. So your name is Tina? Yes. My name is Steven. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Tina. I appreciate you taking the time to sit down. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how familiar you are at all with kind of what we do here, what this program is, but the basic idea is uh, providing an opportunity to hopefully not be interrupted by yeah. clock towers. There we go. Now I did the whole song. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a charming quality. It is charming. Ish. It's a little bit annoying. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like being in Hamtramck now when you hear the, the uh, Islamic call to prayer five times a day. You're like, whoa, what's going on? Oh, and it's concerning. It's five times a day, so we get used to it. You, you get used to it after a while, yeah. Uh, I don't know that the Polish do who are living there for a long time. Uh, so let me kind of explain this. Change my mind is the opportunity to sit down and have um, hopefully a productive conversation where we rationalize our positions, typically using the Socratic method mm -hmm. on what are seen as controversial topics. Today's uh, topic was actually requested by students of UT because of a history here and it, it being a hot topic. It is my position that uh, affirmative action, specifically as it relates to uh, campus applications mm -hmm. and acceptance, is racist. Okay. Uh, by definition, I don't agree with it. You are more than welcome to change my mind if you think I'm wrong. Um, well, to begin, I... I, can I tell my story? I mean, I don't sure. have a lot of statistics and data because I wasn't prepared coming here. No, that's fine. Um, I grew up in a like in a very poor rural area, mm -hmm. um, Longview, East Texas. We'd have a lot of opportunities. I have a rel uh, well, I have an in-law from Longview actually. Mm -hmm. Longview, you would go to Tyler, right? Yeah, Is that yeah. where they had the big escalator? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, basic. I don't want to insult Tatum at all. No. So it's a wonderful school, um, but. We, like we kind of follow like career tracks mm -hmm. and the big tracks uh, at least I know were like welding oil field mm -hmm. training and then like we had a nursing school nearby so right. we had a trades trades yeah and so I did the whole, this whole nursing trade okay um, we didn't have a lot of resources but I'm glad I went to Tatum it's a great school but again we didn't have a lot of, a lot of resources we didn't have AP we didn't have IB we just had honors and okay. I did very well however I it was because of the low resources. I, I, I feel like I wouldn't have gotten in, or had if I, for compared to like Austin school students, okay. or high school, because they have AP, they have IB, they have all mm -hmm. these resources to do well in college. And if it wasn't for affirmative action, students like me 
I feel like would have less of a chance to go to a place like Tatum where they had all these different mm -hmm. majors and different organizations that would have helped students like be more capable to get a job. Sure. Um, well, I guess a couple of questions. Can I ask you, first off, not knowing your personal story, but yes. I am very interested, how do you believe that affirmative action helped you? Um, sim specifically. It would have given me, um, I guess, a more holistic look. Like, uh, due to my, I, like, I didn't have any AP I beat. I didn't have much organizations I went to. Sure. So, I was quite sparse when it comes to that sort of resume. Right. But I had a huge, like a great essay uh, coming from an immigrant family. Mm -hmm. uh, I was first generation American. Um, okay. Because they were able to say, okay, she she's not only black, but she came from an immigrant family. And because she went through all these adversities, mm -hmm. she's still qualified to go to UT. It's not just based on um, your resume, academic or service resume, you know? Mm -hmm. But it sounds to me like you said that you did perform well at um, your schools. Yes, I did. I did. Um, and that's no joke. Yeah. Um, it was just that anyone can like really do well academically like you know I would I feel like no no not anyone can do well academically that's an accomplishment and I think that's an important that's a far more important uh, measurement mm -hmm. of who you are than your race because it's a performative measurement you chose to work hard and be good in school you chose a career path you chose to write a formidable essay I think that's a great thing I just don't see how your race entering into the equation mm -hmm. if these performative standards were met which it sounds like they were would help you would that be like what confirmed like a Tatum small school small resource? Oh, well, forgive me, I'm not for, super familiar with Tatum. Is Tatum? Uh, the Tatum's the high school I went. To. Oh, Tatum is the high school you went um, to. And you're saying there were no high schools in your area that had AP well, or sciences, and you're studying year. AP here. What uh, are you studying now? I'm studying uh, political communication, and I'm going into marketing. Okay, so I'm confused. How would you need those classes? Well, like, uh, to get into a place like UT, mm -hmm. I didn't have a, a lot. And, like, um, I was the top of my class, but only in that small pool of, like, I didn't have much competition. Sure. Um, but, like, if I go to a place like Longview, uh, Longview High School. Right. Um, Is that bigger? Yes, a lot bigger. Okay. Forgive and, me, I'm not super familiar. Yeah, I see them yeah, both sorry. as relatively small towns. Yeah. Um, I, I, still, I, feel like, I feel like I wouldn't have done as well. Okay. Because uh, they had more resources and all that stuff um, I don't understand that well you did you did hold on a second let me let me because you seem like a very bright person yes you did really well in a school with yes. few resources with few resources and you believe that if you had taken your work ethic mm -hmm. right and your level of intelligence which yes. performed very well with very sparse resources mm -hmm. you believe that if someone provided you more resources you would perform more poorly I would uh, imagine the big, opposite wouldn't it be like with a bigger pool of students more competition more brighter students well sure there's more competition but you would have far more resources true it's just I feel like for people who didn't have those resources race if they look at the race and be like okay um, you had these different adversities uh, you uh, it's still important we still need these type of people because if it wasn't if it was based, just based on like a blank academic like resume or like a blank well, it's not based on a blank academic resume. It is based on, uh, you know, observable, concrete metrics. So, for example, your SAT scores or your ACT scores, um, your uh, overall grades, your extracurriculars, mm -hmm. right? All of these things are performative. What is not performative is being born black. And I don't believe that that should enter into the equation because yeah. I think, first off, can I, can I, and I don't want you to take this the wrong way, yes. it sounds to me like you, respectfully, are struggling with a little self-doubt we were saying that maybe if not for affirmative action, you may not have made it to this school. And that's sad to me, because I believe that if we take someone with fewer resources like yourself, who made her resume sing and dance and was a brilliant student, and we gave you more resources, I believe you were brilliant with little, and I believe that you would be brilliant with more. I think for you to think of yourself that only because of a government program you got into this great school, is kind of sad, as opposed to relating it to your accomplishments. Forgive me. That's how. That's how yeah, I view yeah, it. Um, do you understand what yes, I mean? Yes, I, I do. It's because I see someone who did, who came out of adversity, who came from a school that didn't have a lot to offer, and did well regardless. Mm -hmm. Seems to me that actually affirmative action, which would view you through the prism of race rather than your accomplishments, um, would be uh, self-defeating. I guess if you put it that way, it would be. 
but um, maybe I'm, I'm very independent. Like I'm an independent voter, but like mm-hmm. um, I'm not well as well versed at, in politics as I should be. Sure. But um, how would you promote more like, Republican? Yeah. How would you promote more minority outreach? You know, because usually when I view Republicans, I view like Bill O'Reilly. <laughs> well, I hope you don't view me as Bill O'Reilly. No, no. And might see my hands are above the table. There's no, there's no, no groping going on here. Um, well, first off, I don't, I don't want to necessarily talk about Republican outreach because we are talking about affirmative action. Yes. I do agree with you that there has been um, horrible messaging from Republicans. It is interesting to me that oh, I think it's 34 percent of Black Americans approve of the job that Donald Trump is doing, which is a huge change from in the past. So I do believe that there have been some inroads made just because people are able to think more independently now. And I think a big reason for that is for the longest time, people were told, mm-hmm. I would imagine this is true, correct me if I'm wrong, you were probably taught that as a black person, vote Democrat. Yes. Right. And I think that that's changing a little bit now, uh, particularly in the post kind of Obama era where he didn't really do necessarily a whole lot for black mm-hmm. Americans where people are looking at it a little more critically. Mm-hmm. So I have my own thoughts on that. I don't necessarily want to get into the Republican yeah, yeah. outreach, but maybe we can talk about it later. Yeah. Um, but, but back to the idea of affirmative action. Now, let me ask you this. Um, you said you come from your first generation immigrant yes, family. Yes, I am. So could you tell me a little bit about your family and your parents? Um, my parents uh, came from Ethiopia. Oh, um, okay. Um, there was a huge war going on between Ethiopia and Eritrea in the yeah. 90s. So they immigrated here to the U.S. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that traditionally there's a great immigrant story how they rose to the top, but like my parents, due to their uh, low ac- like they they weren't able to pursue a lot academically, mm-hmm. which is why they didn't get like a you know suddenly rose to the top sort of story. Sure. They uh, they mostly stayed as a gas station okay. owners. They own a gas station. Yeah, they own a gas station. Both parents together. Yes. Okay. Um, have they done pretty well for themselves? Um, they're pretty stable. It's like Middle class, it, at yeah. least. Working class. It's a very Working rural class. area, so there's not a lot of R- rural area. There. Okay. So. But then it allowed you to mm-hmm. pursue what you wanted to. Yes. Your parents still together? Divorced, actually. Okay. Were they divorced when you were young, or more um, recently? More recently. More recently. So you grew up with two parents in the household. Yes. Okay. Well, this is why that's important because you talked about this story and I don't see, uh, I don't see this as necessarily a black versus white thing. Uh, but the biggest, the biggest factor that indicates socioeconomic status, whether it's going to college, whether it's performing well academically, whether it's ending up in prison, whether it's depression, whether having a family of your own, is having a dual parent household. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, the chances of you being born into poverty, if you have two parents and they waited until they were married to have children, it, there's a 98% chance that you don't end up in poverty mm-hmm. and a 70% chance that you guys end up at least in the middle class. And then there's a, there are a bunch of other percentages I can give you where they end up actually being the top 20%, 70% of Americans. But the biggest indicator is not college degree, it's not race. You see this across all races. Mm-hmm. It's whether you have two parents in the household. Now, this is important because if you go back to the 1960s, uh, black Americans had, and a lot of them also were immigrants. Um, I actually have a lot of Ethiopian friends. I went to an Ethiopian church in Los Angeles for a little while, and uh, very welcoming people. Yeah, yeah. Very welcoming. Mm-hmm. Food was a big thing. Yeah, you know, I mean, we would sit, huge. and we. I learned uh, the squishy bread, all that in stuff. Jera, yes. I didn't like it at first. The texture no, was a little weird. So- you have to dip with the sauce. The sauce right, but by itself, it's kind of spongy. Yeah. It is. yeah. So um, wonderful family, by the way. But very, all of them, uh, this girl's uncles, um, her sister, they all had pretty strong marriages. I don't mm-hmm. know if that's a cultural thing with Ethiopia. It seems like yes, very family focused. So from the 1960s, black Americans had a single parent household rate or fatherless household rate of under 25%. That has since gone to almost 80% of black Americans today either don't have a mom or a dad, mm-hmm. typically don't have a father. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is the biggest indicator of someone uh, ending up in poverty mm-hmm. rather than a college degree. Mm-hmm. So I think that's important to note because affirmative action has been focusing on the wrong problem, assuming that if we view through the pr- prism of, uh, of race uh, applicants and simply get more black students into colleges, regardless of qualifications, um, that they will perform better, that it will equalize the economic disparity. Mm-hmm. And it sounds to me like you're, what you're talking about is not so much a racial disparity, but an economic one yes. coming from a rural area. Yes. So it sounds almost like you're making a case against affirmative action as it stands based on race, Mm -hmm. but the idea of providing uh, resources to those of lower socioeconomic status. Am I correct in that? Yeah, but wouldn't that, isn't those, I don't want to sound racist, racist, but um, isn't those... (laughs) um, It's okay, it's just you and I. (laughs) Isn't those of low socioeconomic status usually minorities? Often, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. A big part of that is because of a 77% 
single household rate with black Americans. Um, Asian Americans actually make more than white Americans on average. And they actually are harmed by affirmative action. I don't know if you're aware of this, but with the Harvard lawsuit. Oh, yes. Um, the personality trait. They, they, they yeah, they're very racist against Asians on the personality. And the reason for that is because they tend to score higher. So, for example, in Harvard, with these documents that were released, on average, an Asian American applicant would have to score 1,300 on the mm -hmm. SATs. A white American student, sorry, 1,350. A white American student would have to score 1,310 on average. Mm -hmm. A black American student would have to uh, score 1,100. Mm -hmm. Does that seem right to you? Because many of those Asian Americans also come from families where they're gas station owners or bodega owners. We're simp Does it seem fair to you to exclude people based exclusively on race rather than academic performance, especially as someone who's performed so well academically? No, I mean, if you worked hard, you should be able to get go to any college. Right. It's just, I don't know. Did you work hard? Oh, yes, sir, I did. And you wanted to go to UT? Yes, sir, I did. <laughs> that makes me happy. That's what I want to see. It's just... And I don't want to see it because you, you go here because you're black. Yeah. I want you to know that it's because you worked hard. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's a, a, a racism of soft expectations. You know, imagine if you're a black student who didn't score so well, mm -hmm. right? Had a lower SAT score, didn't score so well, and you know that you're in the university as a diversity applicant. Mm -hmm. That self-doubt, and that's what I'm saying, I don't want you to have it. It, yeah. it, to me, it seems so sad to have for the rest of your life to go, man, did I really deserve this spot? Or was it because of the color of my skin? Um, and I think that's why we see detrimental effects, you know, black Americans, because of a, hold on, don't move. There's a spider on your shoulder. I don't know if you're afraid oh. of spiders. I hate spiders. Thank goodness. I, 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 I hate spiders. Yeah. It was right there. Okay, sorry, my heart's going like this. Sorry, oh, okay. uh, I, I do not like spiders. Um, we see a much higher dropout rate mm -hmm. with black Americans at university or um, them making up a disproportionately uh, high percentage of the lower performing students in the class because they've been accepted with lower academic performance and then they tend to do poorly because they're often mismatched against people who were accepted on their merits and that to me is very sad um and then my question is like in, in college we learned that it's only because with the college degree that you have a higher chance of like getting a high income like you know right. people with a high school degree won't earn as much as a person with an associate degree and then a bachelor degree and master's. Right. Be because of affirmative action, wait, okay, without affirmative action, would there be any other way for minorities? To your way. Well, you worked hard. Yes. You but worked hard. It has nothing to do with the color of your skin. And by the way, that's also not true. Let me tell you something. You're studying political science? Uh, yes. Oh, political communication, but it's basic. Okay. I'm, you're going to get mad at me to tell you this, but do you realize that if you would have gone to a trade school for nursing or working in an oil field or electrician, you would be making more money doing that than studying poli-sci? You would have made a lot more money. Yes. That's probably why I'm going to marketing. <laughs> there you go. Even then, you would make far more uh, money in a trade uh, with your apprenticeship and after only a couple of years and after a degree from UT. So again, that would sort of reflect the idea that going to an Ivy, Ivy League school or a high-end school mm -hmm. um, like University of Austin is not an indicator of economic success. People right now who go into trades do better than people who go into universities. And again, a, a much more important indicator is a nuclear family, a father and a mother in a household, far greater indicator than any college degree. And here's what's so concerning to me. You know, you've heard me talk about this before and I've talked about this with other people where I, I, I know that I'm getting repetitive, but it's because we're discussing the same issue. Why do you think, let me ask you this, why do you think that black Americans in the 1960s you know, this is post Jim Crow, Voting Rights Act of 65, had really strong family households, like, like your family has talked about, you know, where it was less than 25% single household rate. Why do you think from 1965 to 2019, we then ended up with a nearly 80% single parent household rate? What do you think influenced that? Of course, there's a cultural factor, as conservatives know, it's like the culturally the black culture shifted from nuclearness to but why consumerism oh. would the conservative answer be less Jesus <laughs> no but that's a good try I appreciate it uh, maybe that's a part of it no a big uh, a big reason and it could be a part of it actually so I just thought it was funny with the conservatives say less Jesus um, you really have a, a, a fixed view of what conservatives are uh, I've been to UT so okay uh, no, I don't believe so. No, if you look at actually in the 60s under Lyndon Johnson, the Model Cities program and the Modern Welfare program, 
Uh, these were programs, of course, aimed at righting the wrongs of discrimination in the past, mm -hmm. specifically targeted or aimed toward black people. And it incentivized single-parent households. Mm -hmm. So in trying to right the wrongs of the past, like slavery, like Jim Crow laws, like voter suppression, they created new laws, which I think we would both agree were discriminatory in that they were specifically targeting black Americans, mm -hmm. um, which subsequently created worse results. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at the Model Cities program, you look at schools, inner city black areas where they have much higher than average per pupil spending, but the graduation rate is terrible. Mm -hmm. Then you look at them, uh, at black people benefiting overwhelmingly from, from welfare programs, uh, but overwhelmingly they are single parent households because there's an economic incentive with the current welfare system to be a single parent household. So in trying to right the previous wrongs of systemic discrimination, they made them worse. They created more economic disparity. And doesn't that kind of mirror the idea of affirmative action? Where it's, well, in the past, we didn't have enough black students on campus, so we need to right that by excluding other people and including more blacks. I think it mirrors the same policies that have led to the degradation of the black American family. And I think we see that in the results of affirmative action. Primarily, fewer black uh, uh, Americans enrolling in, in uh, top tier higher education than even 35 years ago. It hasn't worked. So your solution is less government, right? My, my solution is for them to be performative based. It really, it, affirmative action has been negligible in its results. Uh, the only results that we see, I would argue, have been primarily negative. I would certainly argue, maybe you could argue this, maybe you would disagree, but culturally, it seems as though it's had far more negative ramifications in creating divisiveness on campus where, you know, sometimes people feel like, oh, that's an affirmative action student. Mm -hmm. You know, or like you said, you believe that without affirmative action you wouldn't be on this campus. Um, I think the effect has been negative. I think overall, if I'm being fair, mm -hmm. the effect statistically has been negligible. And I would prefer to focus on academic standards um, and certainly not harm anyone because they're lacking a specific skin color. I think you worked really hard from what you told me. I haven't seen your test scores, but I believe you. Um, I assume you've worked very hard and you deserve to be here and you should feel confident and believe that you have a right to be here just as I think that an Asian American who is here should believe and understand that they have the right to be here based on the merits of their performance and the contents of their character, not because of some diversity program. A final question. Yes. Again, I'm, I'm reiterating this question because it means a lot. No, I appreciate it. Um, if we base it on just performance, per performance, how can, how can like you say Asian students outperform even white people? So would you, wouldn't that just make it like a full bunch of Asians and white people <laughs> at school? No, 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 not necessarily. Um, they would disproportionately make up more of yeah. a student body on campus. Like this, that's what I but read what's about wrong in New York. That? I mean, yeah. in the New York school, New York schools. Uh, de Blasio had a huge uh, uh, pushback against minority people because w the top schools were just filled with Asian. A white lot of Asians. No offense. No. Um, but Not white people, Asians. A yeah, Asians. And, and, and a big reason for that is because, uh, you know, the Asian community at large mm -hmm. has placed a lot of importance on academics. Mm -hmm. And when I say performative, by the way, I don't just mean SAT scores, okay. right? Because I don't know if you're familiar with the Harvard lawsuit, but they were very, it was pretty racist against Asians because they said, well, we, we measure a bunch of different standards. The holistic like, look. Yes, right? But a lot of those are intangible. A lot of them are variables that can't be quantified. And so, so they, they would disproportionately weigh Asians saying like, oh, uh, seems very math focused not particularly socially inclined. When I say performative standards, I don't just mean the test scores, but extracurriculars, mm -hmm. you know, like you talked about, or um, what other programs you enrolled in, what other activities, what kind of con uh, contributions to your community. Those are all performative. Mm -hmm. When I say performative, I mean including all of those, just not, uh, for the same reason that it's considered racism. Maybe if I explain it this way, you might understand. YouTube has this policy, and so do a lot of universities, and when people talk about hate speech, which I, I don't agree with, but um, I don't agree that hate speech is a thing, but they base it on the idea of if you insult or denigrate someone based on what they call intrinsic characteristics, meaning things that they have no control over, they can't change, like race, sex, gender, they consider that hate speech in a lot of these countries. However, that is the exact same standard that affirmative action uses in determining student applicants. Mm -hmm. I believe in uh, quantifying all of the variables that are performative, just not the same intrinsic characteristics that we don't believe people should insult one for. Mm -hmm. Race, sex, uh, or gender, sorry, sexual orientation. Okay. That should not be included. Okay. Because I believe by definition it's racist. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't want to like, for students who have no other way to like get in, like if they didn't have, again, a very 
uh, extensive resume or if they didn't have a lot of opportunities to do a lot of service uh, service orgs and stuff. You did. Oh. You're from what from what you've said, not insulting them. Um, you're from a very small town yes. with not a lot to offer. Yes. And it sounds to me like you I, did a whole lot. As much as I could with the resources that were given. Right. I mean, on why on, why on shouldn't paper, we expect that from everyone paper, else? Well, just on paper wasn't a, a lot. So I, I, I don't know. On paper, what you contributed wasn't a lot. So in other words, are you saying that you don't think you deserve a spot at UT? Are you saying that you think you got in because you're black? Yeah. You do? Maybe. No, I, the fact that you don't know right now, do you see that as a, isn't that a bad thing? That's not a good thing. It's not. It's not. I want you to be able to say, I deserve to be here. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Wouldn't it be better? Let's say there wasn't a whole lot on paper. Okay? Let's say that's the case. I don't know. I assume that you probably did pretty well. But let's say there's not a whole lot on paper. Yeah. Wouldn't it still be better for you to go to a community college, right? Get those credits and know that you deserve your spot at UT so that when I ask you this question right now, beyond any shadow of a doubt, you can say, no, I earned my spot here. I was more qualified than anyone else. That's, when I, that's why I'm at UT. Mm -hmm. Don't you think you'd feel better in giving that answer? I would. I, it's just that right now, I don't see anything other than affirmative action right now that would... I'd rather live with the doubt and still get the opportunities, you know, like, because if I, if, there, if there's doubt that I got here, I can, now that I'm here, I can, I can push myself even forward to really earn it, you know? Should have earned it before you got here, and I think you probably did. Yeah. I, and that's, here's, here's the thing, when you look at the statistics, they can't know. Mm -hmm. Black students can't know, right? Mm -hmm. If you are admitted, because affirmative action exists, okay, even if you are more qualified than that Asian student, if I ask that student this question right now, they have to answer the same way that you do. I don't know. I, I think I deserve to be here, but I don't know. Maybe it was affirmative action. But they have to answer that same way as the student who is in affirmative action acceptance. Right? Right. That's sad. Even the person who is undoubtedly qualified, who deserved their spot, they can never answer, yes, I deserve to be here and be proud of their accomplishments. That being said, Asians on campus can answer it, and white students on campus can answer it, because they had to perform to higher standards. So if I ask the same question right now to an Asian student on campus, did you earn your spot here, do you deserve to be here, they will be able to tell me beyond any shadow of a doubt, absolutely, mm -hmm. I earned higher in the SATs, I did more extracurriculars, I earned my spot at this university. You for, can't because of the policy in place. And that to me is a very... Um, it's not only beyond the idea that affirmative action hasn't been effective, mm -hmm. I think that's immoral because it destroys uh, the human spirit and doubting yourself. It, yeah, it can be really disheartening when you look at it that way. I just wouldn't want to take away any, any hope other than like, what's the plan other than this? I'm taking away from affirmative action. What can I give minority students that can still give them the hope and the chance to get in? Other I don't think you need to give them anything. I don't think you need to give them anything. I think the more you give them, when you say that, and by the way, when we're talking about policies, it's usually rich white liberals saying, the more we can give black people, and then it destroys the black American family. Right? The more we can give black students, mm -hmm. and then you have to answer with self-doubt that you don't know if you've warranted a spot here. It doesn't seem like giving people anything has worked out very well. I think that we should stop looking at students through the prism of lens and try and look at accomplishments, character, and intellectual diversity. Who was it who said, not judged by the color of his skin, but the content of his character? Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King. I believe that we should apply that same standard on university. Let me ask you this final question. Okay. Okay, I've really enjoyed our conversation. I hope, I hope this yeah, has been productive yeah. too, as well for you. Let's say that your application, so you were saying to UT, didn't really have a whole lot, but you had a great essay. Yeah. Let's say UT said to you, we like what we see, but you don't have experience in necessarily the right programs. We would like to see you reapply next year uh, after uh, uh, accruing some credits at a community college. Mm -hmm. right? If they said that to you, what would you have done? I would have gotten those credits and done great with them. I mean, I would have went 110% on those grades, uh, on those credits, I mean. Everyone can do that. What made you get into UT wasn't your race. It was what you just described to me, which was your work ethic and how you view the world. And my point is, let's say, even if you were an affirmative action applicant, I don't know that you were. I'm not hearing the kind of attitude from someone who was. I think you probably earned your spot here. Thank you. But you're telling me that if they said, try again, you would have tried again until you, got, you had gotten mm -hmm. it. Then know that you've earned your spot here. 
and make the most of it and understand that everyone else should be held to that same standard that you hold yourself to. That's what I'm saying. Nothing really racist about that at all. See, we agree. Yeah. Thank you so much, Tina, for sitting down. I appreciate it. Thank you. Tina, correct? Yes, yes. Thank you. Hold on. Don't move. Let me make sure you don't have a spider. Okay, it's gone. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time and being... And thank you for telling me your story. Yeah, no problem. Anytime. I'll, Absolutely. I'll look more into you. God bless. Thank you. this installment of Change My Mind, click one of these other installments in the videos playing in boxes here. That's the only way you'll find them because if you search Change My Mind, they might not show up because YouTube's deemed them controversial. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see you, but we probably won't.